come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. Hey, you can help us out with that. Go over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you who are into the same crazy stuff that we are. These are the internet radio superstars, Sean, Michaela, and I'm Colin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, is Holly, right now? Okay, are you the only one that can see holly right now sean no is she comment. sitting in no this chair no yeah. right. Just move along right. i mean that would go with the theme for tonight yeah, yeah. so well speaking of which tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by kayla what did we watch tonight we watched paranormal activity three Ooh, and getting deep in the sequels how many paranormal activities are there there are six and a seventh was just announced oh, they're gonna Jesus. do seven. Oh, really yes I had and, like heard this that. week okay. like oh, there you oh go. all they said was it's happening <laughs> <laughs> like no other context no nothing it just uh paranormal activity seven is happening what year was this one really 2011 it's 10 what? year anniversary wow. oh, okay. okay so the first one came out in 2007 2007 okay and then i think the second was 2010 I don't okay. know, I waited that long. So, uh, title sequence. Paranormal Activity, Paranormal Activity 2, Paranormal Activity 3, Paranormal Activity 4. Oh, okay, this is where I'm going to, you're going to have to <laughs> test me out. Paranormal Activity, the marked ones. Yeah. Okay. Paranormal Activity, the ghost dimension. In yeah. 3D. And then uh, I don't know what the last one's called. Isn't, wasn't that the last one? Wait, we have Isn't four, that five? Five and six. Yeah. Okay, six that's six. Coming. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. No, seven's seven is coming. coming. Yeah. Wait. Is yeah, it, we, oh shit! Were yeah, f- we're missing one. No, no, no. We had four regular named paranormal. Yep. And then five was marked, marked, ones, ones, marked ones, and then, and ghost, then the dimension. ghost dimension. Okay, that's six. Okay, okay, there okay. We, go. we got them all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this was a huge deal. This series, huge deal. There was, I mean, I remember, and probably a lot of you listening, like uh, horror cultural fans, phenomenon. Yeah, like w- my generation had Freddie and Jason and Michael Myers. You know, mm-hmm. every year, your generation had Saw. And paranormal activity competing for your box office dollars yep. every Halloween. Well, we, we've <laughs> talked about on a, I think it might have been on a, f- a Final Destination episode, but we talked about how 2007 was like a pivotal year in 2000s horror because that was when everything went from being torture porn to other stuff because pa- because of paranormal activity. Paranormal this was the fulcrum horror. point that, yeah. that, that made that change. It's, I mean, it's weird mm-hmm. when I look back at 2007, but I mean, obviously there's an antecedent here for the whole series, which is the Blair Witch Project, mm-hmm. which was 99, yes. right? Correct. I mean, Blair Witch Project, you know, is basically single-handedly, you know, responsible for creating the found footage genre. I mean, I know, you know, you could say Cannibal Holocaust, you know, in in horror, right? right? But but like, that's a deep well, cut. Well, yeah, yeah. There's, there's influence everywhere, but you're right. Blair Witch made this. It became a huge like, success. But why did it take? I mean, I, this is I, I don't know the answer to this. Why did it take until 2007? Because it really is the found footage genre has exploded after Paranormal Activity. It really did. Not yeah. after uh, there weren't right. imitators of Blair Witch. Because what after this we have Wreck. And quarantine, right? Yeah, those are found like, footage movies. Uh, the Poughkeepsie the VHS, tapes, the VHS you know, movies, movies yeah. the Last Exorcism, mm-hmm. which yep. we did on this show. I yep. mean, there's just Troll Hunter. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, it just goes on and on and mm-hmm. on. There's a, a kajillion found found footage 3D. Yep. Okay, there's. Right. Uh, did we yeah. get any like attempts to jumpstart this between 1999 and 2007? I don't think so because Blair Witch abandoned that premise immediately. Like they sure, yeah, they they abandoned the, the found yeah. footage. After the first one, yeah. like I think they thought it was a gimmick that couldn't they couldn't pull off again. I think they're smart if that is what they thought. I think they it's a good idea that they left it. Could you imagine not only creating like an iconic cultural phenomenon of a movie like Blair Witch, but creating a movie that like creates a whole subgenre yeah. as well as being a cultural phenomenon? That's yeah. like that's a once in a lifetime. That's incredible. Yeah. And this is Oren Pele was the guy who came up with the original Paranormal Activity. Correct. Did you ever see, okay, before this, before Paranormal Activity, I remember seeing the series of YouTube videos and they were called like Pantry Ghost or something like that. And there was like a huh. series where they seemed to like escalate and it was like, I mean, there was no production company, you know, listed. It was basically like there was a guy in a house and he's like, you know, just showing, 
you know, he'd have like a this pa- glass pantry door and he'd close it and there was like a, you know, a figure and he opened the door and there's nobody there. Mm-hmm. And then I think that like, you know. I saw it on Paranormal Caught on Camera. Yeah, okay, I have seen okay. it. Yeah. So they were out there and I just wonder if that was an inspiration for Paranormal Activity. Because like somebody I saw that been. and said, you know, well, I work in visual effects. I think that's what mm-hmm. Oren Pele did, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so he's like, I, you know, I just bought a house. We can shoot a movie in my house mm-hmm. <laughs> and this will be like a thing. Uh, if I remember right, the the origins of paranormal activity were um, he produced like a videotape and just like distributed this somehow mm-hmm. to studio heads. Mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg saw it and said, we Let's should do something with ending. that. Yeah. So it was his connection through DreamWorks to Paramount. Yep. Paramount wow. actually bought the movie, but they were sneaky about it. And they did this whole thing where, like, you had to request to have the movie brought to your town. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it was coming out anyway. They didn't tell you that. Yeah. But it made you seem like you could request to get this horror movie to come to your town. What a genius piece of marketing. <laughs> right. And I remember, like, another, the, the, the multiple endings to the original Paranormal yes. Activity actually pays off very well for them. Because I remember at the time, I went and saw it in theaters because it was a huge cultural phenomenon. And then I remember one of my friends torrented it. And we were talking about it and we had completely different endings of what they yes. saw okay. and what I saw. And I was like, this is a fucking genius marketing strategy. Like everything Paranormal Activity did in its pushing of the movie was genius and revolutionary. Especially because they were using the uh, uh, the burgeoning front of the Internet where especially when you could up where like you were saying, you could put stuff on YouTube. We're in an era where just like. Is this real? Is somebody mm-hmm. putting right. this together? Which is like, what Blair Witch did too. But right. like, but Paramount like, to be perfected what Blair Witch kind of started, right? Right. Yeah. I yeah. think so. Yeah. I mean, you're several re- revolutionary. It, the seeds were sown by the marketing of Blair Witch because right. that was kind of marketed initially as like this is a real documentary. Yeah. That we that was put together from this footage that you know these and people was, actually died <laughs> and that was early internet where you believed everything you read on the yeah, internet right, because yeah. it was so early on and early internet and at that time they were using at this point they were using the internet to feed into that story whereas now you could probably use it to break down whatever myth or legend oh. or marketing campaign studios are trying to put out there you're just like this isn't true this is fake like everything is so connected now on the internet, it's hard. It would be way harder to get away with that stuff. Yeah, you know, it broke the world for me on the original paranormal activity because I was I was in high school. I was like, I want to believe this is real. Like, sure. I want I want to buy into like the gimmick and believe this is real. I'm fucking channel flipping. We newly have cable in my house, and I land on MTV. And who is on TRL but the two stars of Paranormal Activity? Uh, and I was too like, soon, no, too soon. Yeah. no, I <laughs> want to believe it was real and like they're shattering the world already it wasn't the deal with the blair witch folks that they and i think in cannibal holocaust for a you long know, time and that didn't they work didn't. out very well but they right. were like yeah. you can't do you can't be seen in public for right. like a year right <laughs> yeah i remember i was mystified when they would finally start making like appearances on jay leno and the nightly talk show so yeah. heather donahue and all them on there and i'm yep. just like it, it, a whole weird new thing mm-hmm. f- growing up in that time. Right. I met them at a convention a few years ago and I was like, yeah, you probably had like a 20 year ban on being able to do conventions. I'm sure. Right. Like this, <laughs> you just now were able to the point where you're allowed to do conventions. It's like, hey, but, you're alive. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I remember the poster with all their signatures on it was mm-hmm. available, I think like a year afterwards at mm-hmm. conventions and, and something like that. But uh, yeah, this was so, um, I think, uh, Sean, you may have just Googled this. That's why I'm asking you. Did Jason Blum produce the original Paranormal Activity? He is listed as a producer. Yes. And they the distributed it. I know that for sure. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. So this is also the, the beginning house of that Blumhouse, Blumhouse built. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Because, I mean, that I think is the thing that, uh, you know, we're saying that obviously it created the found footage uh, genre. Blair Witch Project uh, was a movie that cost. I don't know, a couple hundred thousand, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And grossed, uh, you know, like hundreds of millions of dollars. Yes. Uh, Paranormal Activity followed the same uh, thing. I think it was like a million dollar movie or less, 700,000 yeah, or something like less, that. Yeah. And it made hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And Jason Blum was the guy who was sitting there going like, God damn it. Why don't we don't know? They don't all have to be found footage. You understand? Right. If we just make a movie for like a 
a million dollars, it can make sixty to a hundred yeah. million dollars. That first paranormal activity was made for fifteen thousand, and then I think Blumhouse yeah. came behind and put a two hundred thousand dollar marketing budget behind it. So and like they reshot the yeah, they reshot they, yeah. Ending. Um, but so you're saying the one that you saw was like the original tape version, yeah, and then there was the theatrical yep. reshoot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, see, I'm always wondering now. My there's gonna, three endings. Technically, my problem so. is when I first saw it, it was I believe it was a torrent. Mm-hmm. I don't know, and I, that's the only time I've watched that movie. Gotcha. I don't know what the other endings are, or what there's some that are got, worse. If mine was the reshot. I I think. Uh, spoiler alert for I think she eats the camera at the end of one of them, okay. or just like Psh. that is the theatrical. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen that. The other two are not, are the not theatrical. Okay, I would say. okay yeah. so correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Part of the reshoots on the first movie, because Katie Featherstone's mm-hmm. under name, I think mm-hmm. that's the actress, mm-hmm. kind of became the central figure of the Paranormal Activity movies. Correct. Part of the reshoots on the first one was a little bit of mythology building something about because i think the original idea was just like spooky shit was happening in a house i think that's the picture in the attic that was a part of the reshoot which uh like i don't know if you remember sean but like the picture in the attic in the original go over all of it because (laughs) i don't remember what the connect because i figure you need a lot from the first one to i i mean this the the reason why i picked this one though is because even though it's the third one it's a prequel it's the third right. one in the f- third installment, but it's a prequel. And just like the second paranormal activity actually happens concurrently with the first one. It's not a sequel. Right. They're happening at the same time. So the the like timelines are all fucked up based on the numbering system. But the picture in the attic in the first paranormal activity, which like to me is like one of the scariest moments of that movie, is you see that picture being taken in the very beginning of this movie. When she's standing in the driveway and they're like, let's get your picture taken. Uh, that's the picture that's in the attic. Uh, so, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So there is some talk in the first one, I believe, that Katie says something about, like, yeah, when I was younger, my sister and I used to have, I can't even remember what it was, uh, but ghostly experiences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the and then there was a house one, fire. And um, she and that's why she's so freaked out when they find the picture in the attic, because she said this shouldn't exist because burn everything in burned out in the house uh, fire. And then the second one follows her sister, whose name is Christy. Christy. Okay. And that's like... I think that's the weakest one in these first three because so each one has like a camera gimmick, right? The first one is it's just a tripod in their bedroom. The second one is you're watching a baby monitor. And then I feel like we're watching a pool, a pool cleaner a lot. There's a lot of camera on the pool. Mm, yeah, in that second yeah, one. Yeah, right, yeah. And that's not just just not interesting. Yeah. And then the third one, it's the oscillating camera, which we'll we'll get into. But. Yeah, because I remember thinking that uh, I mean, I, my honest opinion on the first movie, I, I went to see it because there was this whole hubbub about it. I'm like, this is the most boring fucking movie I've ever seen in my life because it just seemed like I could see through what was happening. They always hit the subwoofer button whenever, Mm -hmm. you know, there was something Mm going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's like you're just watching nothing that builds suspense. And then, boom, we hit you. The second one seemed like that was Hollywood had had gone like, okay, we can actually make one of these movies and the haunting the, is more intense in that more one. Intense. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. doors are flying open, pots and pans are dropping around and shit. And yeah. the pacing the pool of cleaners it and falling the over. execution of it is like, okay, this is actually somebody who knows right. what they're doing. Who right. directed the second one? Henry Juice and uh, Ariel Shulman, who directed this one as well. They, they took over the franchise after the first one. How many of them did they do? The first four, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the, the catfish people. Yeah, the catfish okay, documentary right. people and nerve as we talked about last yeah. week nerve yeah so that was also a thing because catfish became like a, i don't know if we're going to spoil catfish obviously <laughs> there's a tv show oh the tv show's also... still going yeah so okay. if you haven't if you don't know what catfish is by now you're living under a fucking rock because it's been like seven seasons of a tv show right. and and it's yeah. the term is now I yeah think, more well known than it was but right. everybody like they know that the the first movie was actually like faked right it wasn't actually like a real thing it yeah was, it was faked which it, that devastated it. me when I found that out too. Yeah. Right. So I was like, okay, so Blumhouse went to those guys and said, like, okay, you obviously know how to do this. This is what we're trying to do right, with, right, with the horror right. thing. And then right. they took over the franchise. Right. So, but the second one, I do remember, like, the end of it seemed to me to borrow from the Spanish movie Wreck. Yeah. The, the climactic moments are all in that green night vision thing. I'm like, yep. Wreck. Yeah, I think it ends basically the same way that Wreck yeah. did. It was like, 
huh, somebody saw a wreck. Because <laughs> I don't think that had been like really given a release. I think here. Quarantine was coming out right I, yeah, around and the that's same why time. They suppressed which the has Jennifer Carpenter, yeah. right, who I love. So I, I, I'm more partial to Quarantine just because I like Jennifer Carpenter. But right, yeah, it. Yeah, well, they both they both function basically as the same uh, mm-hmm. movie. Um, so now we get to Paranormal Activity. Three. So I guess to set up Paranormal Activity Three for Sean, who didn't see the second one, <laughs> but I barely saw but the first like, one. But that's why I picked this one because I feel like you don't like. I feel like this one stands alone the most out of those three because it is the prequel, right? So like, there's a little bit in the beginning of like Katie and Christy as adults, which I think these clips are happening right before the events of one and two, since one and two happen concurrently. We were talking off mic prior to this, mm-hmm. but there is a version that you can find out there somewhere on streaming services. I know it's available because I saw it at one point, but it is. And every time there's a movie release, they add to it. It is this uh, uh, a, con- a chronological uh, cut. Yeah, it's a chronological uh, cut of all of them put gotcha. together. And I know they did at least the first three. I can't remember if they added. Four, no, five, they should just stop at three. They just just <laughs> stop because at one point doesn't it be like the neighbors next door, or like living next to Christy, and they're having hauntings or something, right? Across the street. Or okay, something, that's, right? like, Isn't that's that such a reach. Four? Like this is like to me, oh, this is no. the end of the story. Is three here? Yeah. Right? Like this four is, is where the it extension. Is. It's right. like yeah. once it's ended, how do we get it into the kid across the street? Or yeah. Whatever. You know? Yeah. Um, no. So. But that's also the thing that they did with three. Three tries to give you what you expect from paranormal activity, and like also it's it's the mythology movie. It's it's fi- it's why is this happening? Right. Which like that's a real gamble because sometimes with horror movies you don't want to know why. Sometimes the why takes the scary out of it. You know. Right. Uh, I don't know if that necessarily applies here. I think that depends on the viewership and your opinion of this franchise in general. But like that's a risk to take as a movie maker to be like, let's pull back the curtain and see why mm-hmm. this is happening. It's like. Well, sometimes it's scary if you don't know why. Yeah, because the first one really doesn't, if I remember correctly, it's uh, they come to the conclusion that some kind, it's not just a ghost, it's some kind of demonic. It's not the house, it's me, is yeah. what Katie says at one point. Remember, because they try, they're like, well, let's just leave. And she's like, no, it doesn't matter. It's me. It's not, it, you know. It's an entity yeah. that's focused on her and mm-hmm. wants something from her, but we're not right. entirely clear what that is. And by the end of it, it seems like it gets her. And then in the second one, I think, like, because as you were saying, it takes It's place. going for Hunter, the the son. Yeah. Which doesn't ties it into like, this one a little bit. But we see a little bit, like, before the events of the first one, then during yes. the events of the first one, then Katie shows yep. up possessed, going after mm-hmm. the kid. Yeah. Right. They're parallel movies. Right. So, like, that's why, like, okay, normally I am uh. normally I am all for naming movies one, two, and three. Because, like, that just keeps it simpler versus, like, the marked ones and ghost event. Just, just number it. That's usually my my approach. But when you have movies happening concurrently or before the other one, but you're calling it three and you're calling it two, it makes it very confusing. Mm-hmm. And so, Sean, I understand right. This why. is three, but it's actually one. Yeah. And then two is two, but one is two. It, it's Star Wars. <laughs> two is three. It's Star Wars math, yeah. yeah. And, like, so, Sean, I understand why when I, when I was like, I'm bringing Paramount 2 3, you're like, oh, shit, like, what I'm, homework do I have I'm, to do, you know? Yeah, I'm just, I'm floating through this universe. <laughs> yeah. well, I am in the ghost dimension. Okay, okay, so as a first-time viewer of it, what questions do you have just getting into, like, uh, uh, the movie? I don't know if I'm the guy who's going <laughs> to give you Sean, anything Sean's like, what questions to come out of this. Um, the, uh, shh. Man, I feel like I gotta watch two other movies again to even oh, try to jump into this thing. Okay. Even though this even though this is like them as kids in the eighties. Like well, this is the start yeah, of it. Let's all. all right, let's let's this quote, is your unquote, episode 80s. one. Let's no, do that right now. This is your quote, episode unquote, one 80s. of Star Wars, my, right? My my concern is less of the uh I'm gonna say less of the story of the movie and more on the way the movie is constructed and the actors in it. This this is where my interest is, or my complaints. I'm going to say complaints because that's where I'm going to be headed with this movie. Okay. All right, you so. have a real problem with found footage, don't oh, you? Oh, no. Uh, I love Blair Witch. It's great. You you took Last Exorcism to task. Let, let me put it this way. Uh, this movie's got everything working against it for me. Is this- there a found footage movie other than Blair Witch you like? Because like that's the, like that's like the Citizen Kane of of found footage. So like yeah. obviously everybody likes that. And then one. the big one is like Cloverfield, right? Where Cloverfield. Yeah. Like, we're also- going to spend a kajillion dollars yeah. on it, but make it look like it was made for five bucks. Right. And those are the, probably the only two that I'm going to be like, I'll go to bat for. Other than that, it doesn't. 
It doesn't work for me, especially in this. Okay, first of all, ghosts. Like, I am all for it. If ghost stuff, I mean, if any of this actually happened to me, I'd be scared shitless. That, I'll give them but that. that's the mindset but you I need to be in watching that the movie. Mindset because I can't relate to ghostly happenings because a they haven't happened to me. Uh, I'm starting to lose faith in ghostly stuff because it hasn't happened and I haven't seen it. <laughs> and unless something like that happens to me, I can't. I can't get into their mindset. I can't relate to it. And so maybe that's why I look at their actions as like this. This doesn't seem realistic at all. I think it's what a do lot you to do, do with the situation? actors? What would I do in this? Yeah, situation? Well, I'd be like how gone. <laughs> but, I'd be so but, gone, Sean. It's not the house. It's you. That's the thing. Like, it's but is it you? Is, uh, if it's me, yeah. Like then, that's that's the that's the thesis statement okay, of these movies. Is it not the house? It is, it is them. That's fine. If it's me, I'm not doing this. Let's put it that way. Maybe I can't come up with what I would do. I can tell you what I'm not going to do. Is document it all. Do- that seems no, like the best way to approach to it. This extent, because first of all, the. Who's ever got to set up the reason for the cameras and who whatever oh. character is stuck uh, having to keep recording? That's a merciless um, job in these movies, as far as I'm concerned. And that's why because I, autom- I hate them. In Blair Witch, it works, I guess, because they are documentary filmmakers. Yes. They would have cameras running all the time. There's in the first purpose. one, it kind of works. And I guess that's what they're playing on here is that. Uh, well, actually, is it because there's in the paranormal first one, activity? It's and that's because why sets... things have been going on, so okay. they're trying to document already it, yeah. right out of the yeah. bat. Right. And, then the and in the one... second one, it's secure. It's it's the the baby cam and, right. and like the security cameras around the house, so no one is actually filming. It's just the security setup in the right. house. Which honestly, if you're going to do a paranormal activity seven. I feel like that makes a ton of sense now in 2021 ring cameras and everything. Like, I think this franchise ages better as time goes on. Mm. I feel like it makes more sense that everyone's recording everything as time goes on. uh, The cameras, it'll be showing stuff. Dash cams and and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, But I guess that's a thing that you always have to go into these found footage movies with is trying to, uh, you know... In order to have a movie, there has to be a camera running, and you have yes. to justify why that camera's right. running. Yes. And they each come up with a reason. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The one in between Blair Witch, and we talked about it last week, was My Little Eye in 2001, mm-hmm. which was the, uh, which that one was adapted, like Halloween Resurrection did, like the, we're going to get into found footage. Yeah. We're putting you cameras brought that. Around the, <laughs> I did, and then we all lambasted. <laughs> um so in this one, there's a guy who Dennis. Dennis, who has just married Julie. They're not married. Dating Julie. Yeah. Living They've been together Julie. a few months. First complaint. This relationship. <laughs> but, okay, but Dennis, I think, is like the most likable character in this whole I movie. I hate Dennis. <laughs> Why? He is so unlikable. I would slap. What? I'm on How? her side. I'd slap the shit out of him if he was still recording in this stuff. Why does he record himself for hours? I know he's supposed to be in like the he's... mania of looking for shit. But... Okay, did you not no, have I a dad like in the Dennis. 80s that got a camcorder and recorded everything you fucking did as a kid? <sighs> no, that was, I'm past that. I, I'm, I, I'm saying, I'm, but did you experience that no. as a hu- you'd never had a dad in the 80s that got like a camcorder and like recorded everything you did as a kid? Nope. I remember. Well, was that, no, well you no, missed it. You missed a big up. part I of Americana. Uncle, I had an so. uncle who did it and yeah. he always had his camera out. Yeah. So you know yeah. someone who did it. Like, I mean, I remember. My dad was, my dad's an electrical engineer. We had a Betamax. We had, yeah. my dad, fine. my dad but was Dennis. That's like, the, the thing I, you know, that watching this movie, I was like, Jesus Christ, how much is he putting into these cameras? Cause those fucking things weren't cheap. This is set in But it's his job. He's a wedding videographer and photographer. It's right. his job. So like, at least about, that makes more sense of it. He has about three cameras by the time this is going. Yeah. Um. So, you know, you know, obviously, realism, we're throwing out the window. We're saying for dramatic purposes, yep. it's in high definition. It doesn't look like Oh, yeah. It doesn't look like it's from 19... No, why? Right, but why not? Did nobody you just else gotta give like 19... Ah, I can't give that it up. Go. No. That's a... No. <laughs> can't give it up. These are the things I hold on I to. I think if, like, they, if you would shoot a movie on actual VHS or beta tape and then show it in a theater be horrible. in 2000... Yeah. And, be horrible. Yeah, it's like people... Sean, have you, have you tried... It. I get that. Sean, yeah. have you tried playing like an N64 game on like a modern TV? I mean, probably. Yeah. It, it blows your eyes out. It fucking is impossible to look at. Like, yeah. I, I went to a bar once that was like a barcade and they were like, come play, you know, Mario Kart N64 on the big TV and it was like a projector on the wall. Could not see... A fucking thing because those pixels were being stretched to fucking hell. Like yeah, right. I can't I realize, imagine doing that. Yeah, in I realize they can't do that. Obviously, and I would never expect them to be like, "All right, that's right. It may look like shit, but that's the right way to do it." No, I get that they have to do an HD and everything, but it just—I don't know—it doesn't look like the '80s to me as yeah, well. Because it's a '90s house. All the yeah. you know, we were talking about that during the movie. It's like all the styling fixtures or the hanging lamps and the fireplace in the wall. It's I would like, say that's it's just not a hell. working class '80s family because, like, I have an aunt and uncle that, like, he's an architect 
architect and they built a very modern house in the 80s that looked a lot like that with the loft and everything. Mm. I think it's an upper class you 80s know what? house is what it is. The same uncle who had the camera had this house. Yeah. Like he is he yeah. was the rich construction worker yeah, uncle. Exactly. And he had this house, that camera. Whereas all that like stuff. whereas like we grew up with like plaid couches and like wood paneling, wood you paneling, know. Yeah. yeah. But like and like like Roseanne's house, <laughs> right? Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. the eighties we yeah, know. But this is everywhere. But clearly like as we've established there's money involved in this family like yes. and i was thinking about because i'm like where the fuck did she get this house from because we don't have any context for her what her work situation is but they like her mom said something about like oh the kids miss their dad and i'm wondering yeah. if there was a divorce and maybe I she know. had the house in the divorce and that like never came back yeah. i mean obviously you don't it's Does not that, really not necessary important. i Does remember i come up in the like, one of my of those movies? no one of my complaints of the first movie i remember while watching it and obviously i get that it was some guy you know just making a movie in his house but yeah. when i was watching Watching it, I was like, these characters don't like live and breathe a- and have like a history together, or the, the first one, yeah, or yeah. A-, a history outside of what is happening. Well, and right they seem they like they don't friends, even they like don't each other. Family, yeah, yeah, that was the other thing. But they it's first one, that yes. I think in the second one, I did get a feeling where like, okay, we got actual writers writing right. this one. It wasn't just people making shit up, you know, yeah. on the day. Right. And so obviously, this one's kind of carrying through it. There's little hints and pieces here and there. She is seen in bed at one point, like writing something down. Down after he's gone to sleep, it's like, okay, so she works and does something. Right. Uh, her mom says, you know, that he's using your credit cards to buy all these cameras. Yeah. So it kind of sets up a dynamic between, you know, like what the arrangement is between them. Um, which I, which like, I kind of get the sense that like the mom thinks if you're not in an office from like eight to five, Monday through Friday, you don't have a real job. It's kind of right, like yeah. the vibe I get, you know, cause right. like, like my brother's got a, like a gig economy kind of yeah, thing. My, yeah. 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 Especially my, in the eighties when right, I don't think that the was internet a, wasn't around. Right, and, shit, and that yeah. wasn't a totally reliable. That's like selling a, a vacuum cleaner door to door. Right. Basically. Well, my brother's a wedding photographer. He only works Saturdays and Sundays. He doesn't work during the week because weddings don't happen during the week. That's just right. how it is. Like they have a very weird irregular schedule they might only work 12 hours a week but that's because that's only when weddings are happening you know yep. so like i kind of was like okay she just doesn't understand what he does as a job yeah the grandma yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. The, mm, i knew it mm-hmm. like you're dressing her like that on purpose <laughs> i can see what you're doing mm-hmm. um okay so the two girls uh now we've gone back in time and this is 1988 so we're seeing the origin story of how katie and christy mm-hmm became involved with the supernatural thing that leads to their deaths right in the the, the previous two movies so um i guess i don't know if we just want to spell it out or, or work yeah. our way up to it um well should we talk about like the the major like gimmicks of this movie i want to say i like that's probably like the oscillating camera is like okay. the thing from this movie right because yeah. he talks about how like there's not a wide enough angle for him to shoot like the whole downstairs. So then he takes like an oscillating fan and kind of rigs the camera to it, which like to me that felt like I could see my dad doing something like that, you know, like the ingenuity that, that was the of the most 80s. 80s thing. Yeah. That, well, we I felt in this movie <laughs> him, you know, jimmying that together and putting a camera on like, all right, that's the, the like, I'll find a solution on my own kind right. of attitude. Yeah, so exactly. Figure it out. They haven't well, invented it yet. So and it was, yeah, it. because it was interesting. It's like uh, they want to have this like oscillating camera, which obviously you can get now like with no problem. But mm-hmm. they were like, how do we solve this problem? I got this cool idea, but we can't do it because it's the 80s. Well, we'll just do it. At fan. So it's like the filmmakers figured that out. Yeah. Right. How to do it with which like, I think like technology. sets up some great suspense, I think. Right. Oh, because, yeah, it is. because you can only move as fast. Your eyes can only move as fast as the camera's going to move. And you know something's going to be on the other side of the right. room. Right, and it presents that opportunity for mm-hmm. it. Because if you know, I mean, you kind of pick up on the language of these things, or the language of horror movies when it comes to, like, camera work, and what they're going to do to try and scare you, try and build tension and everything. The back and forth obviously lends itself to, like, oh, they'll go one way, it won't be there, they'll come back, it's there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know. And it's like, what kind of trickery are they going to pull? Because right. I'm always like, okay, they're there. Did they run behind the camera real quick? There was this scene in the oscillating camera thing where she left uh, the kitchen and then we follow her over to the door, you know, then it comes back and the, all the uh, furniture has gone. But it does the insidious thing where you see where. Well, I guess it's not the insidious thing, but like you see her reaction first. You see her shock on her face and then you see 
that all the furniture in the kitchen is gone. Right. Yeah. So like the, we're following. Her. Yeah. The the yeah. the seeing her reaction before you know what she's reacting to, mm-hmm. I think, is mm-hmm. great. But then all the stuff drops from the, and I'm like, okay, how did they get? And you're like, because we're in the digital age, obviously it's two shots. Well, yeah, and you can see it too. Together. I'm not. You can't see it, but I can see it. I can see in the frame, like I see the line where the cut's gonna be. Like I mm-hmm. because she never crosses it. There's one line where it goes over the room. I'm like, well, there's your split, and they just did everything mm-hmm. digitally on that part. That's why I'm bad at these movies because that's all I can see. <laughs> You're seeing it from try- the I'm visual just- effects. Yes, I'm just trying to okay, figure but it this out. This is the thing like, that maybe that that I mean, I get it because that's kind of the way that I watch them too, but like. A listener, you know you're you're listening to people who deal with like video stuff. Yeah, we like yeah. all the time. Like I'm not I'm not know, trying to say like I'm better than this or <laughs> smarter than this. I'm just saying like I'm used to this. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's video geeks like saying like how would I do that? You know, uh, yeah. did you ever see? Was it the first VHS? There was a at the end of that there was a segment by a group called Radio Silence, and it was like a haunted house kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I was still watching that, going like I don't know how the hell they did that. <laughs> there was like shit happening, like and I'm like. Uh, where's the I don't yeah that was like that one got me but this one and I guess a lot of these you can kind of go like okay this is how I would do that you yeah. know that shot and so it's like it's not breaking your brain you know yeah yeah but most people don't watch them I know most people don't watch them like these that, movies is- are an exercise in suspense yeah so but the suspense comes I mean I guess that's that that is what they're doing they're going like you have foreknowledge that well, it's called paranormal activity you know that there's going to be ghosts. They set up a shot and they say like night one, you know? Mm-hmm. And so the dates and- almost exactly line up with when we're recording, by the way, I did not plan that. And so when I saw that, I was like, Oh, Oh, I'm a little afraid to go home tonight. Like, Oh, I'm going to go home at like after midnight and be like, Oh, I got to go right to bed. There's ghosts in my house. You got to set up the camera. But can I go to bed? Cause bed isn't safe. I know. These, nowhere's these safe movies, in these yeah. movies. But I guess you're just going to, it's like, it gets a lot of play out of just static images. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying static on the, I'm saying it's a frozen frame. I mean, you know, it's one camera locked right. off camera angle. And so, especially at this point, be it being part three, they know you're looking for it. So yeah. like you said, they can you get a lot of mileage out of that. sitting there like, and nothing's happening. You're watching people sleep and your eyes are scanning. Every you're scanning part the of whole the frame, frame looking everything. for something. I, I loved that they had the camera set up in the bedroom so that you could see into the hallway, but also see the camera's reflection in the mirror. So you're looking at that mirror being like, they're definitely going to do something with the mirror. And then they never do. Mm-hmm. I like that they kind of bypass the obvious stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess you have to by the time you're at the third movie. Well, I'm but. also kind of like, they never seem to go as far far as i expect that they're going to knowing that like i'm sitting there scanning everything that there wasn't something in the corner that you know i mean the, yeah. the, that was i guess what i liked about something like and this is very different but the the haunting of hill house where uh Fl- mike flanagan the director there like put a uh, ghosts in like all you know that you would pick up in different corners of because right. it's like it's almost like he was thinking though you know you're 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 gonna be right. watching the scan in every every second of the or millimeter of the frame uh these guys really don't they're just like okay we're going to set this here and then eventually something's going to happen and they usually always in them the first one i really remember being like oh the the subwoofer's rumbling this is that means the ghost is here something's going to happen that first one i think that i think the first one has the best escalation of of hauntings if that makes sense because i remember the first time i saw that one my stomach just dropping into my butt when they put the flower on the floor and you see the footprints but they're like hoof shaped Mm -hmm. i remember that just being like oh like (laughs) i like if this were me i would die right now like because how do you explain that you know like there's there's hoof shape right footprints, footprints. maybe yeah. hoof shape yeah, yeah. no yeah. means it's time to go basically yeah. for yeah. most uh, but normal it's not people the house, but it's her right yeah, yeah. Uh, but daniel and the doesn't know catching on fire in that movie too as well yeah yeah but i mean mm-hmm. but from daniel's perspective and i guess julie's perspective dennis uh, dennis. Uh, dennis damn it uh dennis and julie they from their perspective they don't understand they don't know this so this is um for reasons which we are going to get into as we get toward the climax of this movie, paranormal activity begins to happen around these two little girls. Um, it begins at like a birthday party. One little girl starts talking to Toby. Mm-hmm. Toby is, I think, a name that's mentioned in the other two movies. Yep. Uh, we also know from the other two movies that there's a cloven hoof involved here. So, it's, mm-hmm. you know, you envision it as like it's some kind of goat man thing, a devil. Yeah. Right. Something demonic. Yeah. Very yeah, demonic. Sure. 
Uh, the numbering of the night sequence kind of reminds you like the 28 days that the Lutz has had in the Amityville horror mm-hmm. or whatever, like night You know, they skipped over nine eleven. <laughs> oh, yeah. did they? Yeah. I wish oh, they would have had the balls move. to do it. Just do it. No, just do it. <laughs> Every, no, they're just like, we're just not going yeah, to. America suffered around. enough on that day. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the, the hauntings begin to escalate. Um, any of those, like, I mean... The movie employs, I think, more jump scares than the first one did. Am I wrong? Um, like innocuous stuff, like uh, what's her name? At one point, Julie scares Dennis by yeah. jumping out of a Which, closet. Oh my god! When I on. saw this in the theater, oh god, I about shit my pants because, like, mm-hmm. the 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 mask that she's wearing is the same color as her hair, and like her, the skin color is like the same color as her skin, so it it fits very well on her, and that's what makes it so. St- <laughs> terrifying but it's one of those scares you feel stupid for jumping at you know you're just like god damn it they got me and i hate that they got but that's me, why you know? they work i mean yeah. that, right. that's part of the fun of going to mm-hmm. horror movies when right. they can get you maybe that is the best scare in this movie i don't know no i'm just Your saying mileage if may vary but i'm on. just saying if it's a jump scare i want it to be something actually scary in the movie and not a fake out is oh, what i'm okay. saying that's yeah, what yeah. annoys me is when it's the fake out of like oh it's just your friend like I, <laughs> that i hate that's why i'm like oh i hate that i fell for that you know yeah yeah, I get that. If it's if it's an actual <laughs> like demon or villain in the movie, then I'm like, okay, well, I'm justified, you know. <laughs> but then it's like, I mean, but you always know that these beat my pants for a reason. They're not going to exactly. reveal the actual demon in demon form until like the end of the movie. And this one, believe it or not, uh, doesn't at all. It never None of them leaves do. it as a as a you know figment of your imagination. Mm. Um, the um, the scene that I always remembered, like I hadn't seen this since the theater, but the one th- thing that I remembered was the oscillating fan mm-hmm. shot with the ghost, uh, the, sheet? the sheet ghost. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the babysitter. Um, yeah. Which is like, this is definitely a callback to Halloween, right? I mean. Because it's Michael Myers and the ghost sheet and there's a babysitter. Like it's, I eh, feel like it's got to be. That feels Halloween. generic enough where you could apply it to a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like what? I mean, it just, just being a ghost movie, like the the, the, well, yeah, the ghost but being like, under a sheet is like right, but like it's a babysitter, and Halloween yeah. was originally going to be the babysitter murders, you know, like and I don't think it's directly related. That's just me. But they have this because uh, you know you, you always kind of pay attention, or I do, to like how they set this up. You get the innocuous scene where somebody, uh, you know, I think the girls ask the babysitter to tell them a ghost story, and so she puts the sheet on. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, I, you know, I have the visual mm-hmm. reference. And then later, when the babysitter's alone, we see the sheet in the back of a frame, and then the camera moves, comes back, it's not there. Then it comes, moves over to where the babysitter is, and there's a sheet there. In you know, uh, well, I mean, the sheet. There's a little person. There's a figure under the sheet, yeah, and <laughs> yes. then the sheet drops away, yeah, yeah, and then the camera moves away. Um, so I mean, that's like effective stuff because you're like, well, how'd they do it? There's something under the floor, or, you know, mm-hmm. some kind of. You're just kind of like, you know, what's the well, effect and there? I don't know if you guys ever babysat. It's kind of terrifying, especially after the kids go to bed and you're just like awake and you're just killing time until the parents get home. Babysitting kind of sucks, and like it's you're, like, I'm in the you're always house. Yes, right? it's always I don't know uneasy. The sounds of the house, yeah, so everything's weird. And like, oh god, I baby, I back when I was a teenager and I babysat. Like, I used to babysat for people that would go like bar hopping, so they wouldn't come home until like two a.m. And I'm like fourteen <laughs> years old babysitting a three year old until two a.m., which is like unacceptable oh, yeah. unacceptable oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and uh like so like the three-year-old would go to bed at like eight or nine o'clock so then i'm like got like five hours they to myself yeah they didn't have cable so oh. there was nothing to fucking watch <laughs> but like no. like that was the worst so like i, I eat all their food ugh, god it was awful i don't have cable you eat all their well there food. was a time that their that their next door neighbor came and knocked on the door while i was babysitting i was like oh fuck no i am not right. answering yeah, the door yeah, i don't know yeah, you yeah. i don't care if you know the people who live here i think that's the rule you babysit yeah i'm not answering the, the fucking yeah. door yeah nope. so Do they give you pizza money i mean is yeah. that like part of the deal yeah, yeah but like but like they pay you like three dollars an hour or some shit they don't pay well you know <laughs> babysitting is a yeah. lot of work you're responsible you for a child's <laughs> you're responsible for a child's life and they yeah. pay you way below minimum wage you know like 
Yeah, but you're Babysitting forced money. Babysitting sucks. You are underage labor, so yeah. they're just yeah. like... And you have no other means, really, of uh, making money. See, I think it's up to you to be like, YouTube, all right, now, uh, now you just left channel. a 14-year-old here. I can talk to child labor real quick. Oh, I just you stopped doing pony, it. I was just like, with the money. <laughs> this is not for me. I don't like kids. The money's not worth it. And like, I'm sorry, when you have a child, you kind of give up your ability to go bar hopping till 2 a.m. That's just like, that's just life, you know? Like, like the solution is not someone like me taking over <laughs> your responsibilities, you know? Like... Like I, I was at staying up till two a.m. on my own at fourteen <laughs> right, years yeah, old, yeah, yeah. but now I gotta do it for a fucking yeah, job. Sixteen, yeah. you gotta be at least sixteen. Yeah. So how do you get home? I suppose you're. Yeah. yeah. They live the next street over, so okay, I just walked. Right, so walked I walked home at two a.m. Yeah, exactly. Fourteen years old. That's yeah. breaking the curfew. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Right, yeah. I know. Right. That's like all right. Yeah. Pizza money and arrive. Yeah. Just, yeah. Take all this and just boil it down yeah. to these people shouldn't have had kids. Let's just say that. Yeah. Well, uh, Daniel, as an avid uh, cinematographer, has a, a studio in his garage. Yes. A studio. I guess this garage got- looks cozy as hell. I want to hang out in this garage. I got everything look kind of. We were lamenting on the coziness of the couches and, and the, the almond and fridge, movie. the like almond colored fridge in the garage, and then the plaid couch, and then that nice hatchback. Back behind him, I was yeah, like, I could hang out in this garage. Everything was comfortable back then. I think they're just like overstuff it, fucking <laughs> yeah. put some shag carpeting on it. I know. Um, now we're going for minimalism, but back then it was like, uh, yeah, you just had a bunch of shit. Yeah, we make this couch as plushy <laughs> as possible. Well, yeah. so they were making them uh, uh, furniture so you could sleep off coke benders. Like I think that's why. Yeah, they were like, yeah, they had yeah. To be comfortable. You gotta be able to pass out and right, your back yeah, be okay like, the you're next day. Gonna spend two days on this thing. <laughs> I recommend this couch right here. <laughs> well, he's uh, his business is big enough that he employs. Another guy, his name I can't remember. Randy. 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 Thank well, you that's very much. his like second shooter for weddings. Right. The, uh, every photographer has one. Yeah. yeah. So there. Are, uh, so Daniel has you know got this new equipment. So he's like, uh, I can't remember what was it. What actually triggered him off? And I'm like, I'm going to put up cameras in every. Oh, because they're doing a sex tape. That was, uh, uh, he's right. going to shoot a sex tape. Which is tape. a callback to the first one, because in the first one, like Mika says something to Katie, like, oh, you want to shoot a sex tape? And she's like, no. And then this one, she's like, sure, why not? Because they're high. Yeah. Because they All smoke right. weed. And that was yeah. how we get into, okay, so there you go. That's how the filmmakers solve the problem of like, how do we get, the, you know, like, why would they record right. stuff? Why is the camera on the first time? Yeah, because there's like an earthquake, which we're never told if that's a supernatural earthquake or a real earthquake. Right. They live mm-hmm. in Carlsbad, California, mm-hmm. or something to that effect. And um, this is uh, uh, the Kawaitis Interruptus by Earthquake. <laughs> And then we see some dust fall onto a shape that's mm-hmm. not there. Mm-hmm. It's invisible. And then the, he sees that when he plays the recording back and says, okay, there's something going on in my house. I got to put cameras up all over the place. Yep. So he and puts a camera in the girl's room. Girl's loft, actually. Yeah. Okay. This is an open yeah. floor plan house. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Big ass house, no yep. walls. We were, yeah, we were wondering about everybody's <laughs> jobs in this movie. She's like, what do they do? How do you afford I, I, this? I'm house? going with divorce settlement. This is what she I got in the did divorce. He divorced or did he die? Well, no, because she. Oh, uh, maybe because she I said the felt, girls missed their dad. Yeah, and I always felt like he died. No, personally, we, I ne- could be, we never get the way. answer. We never get the answer. It could yeah. go either way. I always yeah. felt like they missed their father. I'm like, well, actually, that's another thing that these movies always do. Found footage movies. And once you become sophisticated to their rhythms, you kind of start to suss that stuff out. But they are always like building. They're layering in where they're going at the end of the movie. Like early on, with uh, it seems like extraneous dialogue. But it actually turns out to be like very important. A box of VHS tapes from grandmas. Yeah. So grandma comes over and grandma has a conversation with uh, Julie about mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, it, se- it seems like the conversation is about what Daniel does for a living. Yep. Uh, but it's actually, she sa- she's a- trying to encourage Julie to have another kid because she always said that she wanted a son. You've got two girls. This like, is hereditary. <laughs> yeah. which, the, like- <laughs> which the second, well, hereditary is this, Sean. Well, uh, yes. Hereditary, <laughs> hereditary is this. Hereditary is this. Um, Did Ari Aster which see is the biggest credit I will give to the paranormal activity go like, I could do like um, the art house version of this. I mean, maybe. We have no idea what happens to people. Probably. Um, yeah, maybe. You know how like. When musicians like sample a song, they have to like give songwriting credit. Maybe he should give like story <laughs> right, credit yeah, to Paranormal Activity. Go back and re-edit <laughs> yeah, the things like yeah. written by and also. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes that's how it happens, right? You watch yeah. something, and you go like, "I could expand on that." Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea, but yeah, I, <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> I've, I've done it with the uh, at work with people's promos. I'm like, I've seen what people have made. I'm like, I could make that better, and I've done it. Well, and the second movie, like 
a lot of the haunting is happening around their son. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and then yeah. in the fourth one, they're trying to go after mm-hmm. the the male firstborn or whatever. Mm-hmm. Always how it goes, because uh, these are old and okay. We're we're getting there. We're <laughs> ramping you up. Uh, so, um, the dynamic basically settles in that uh, uh, Dennis is recording and witnessing uh, paranormal activity. Uh, specifically around Christy. Christy seems to be like communicating directly with Toby. Yes. And he starts researching it. Him and Randy are in on the idea that we're recording ghostly phenomena, but we're not going to tell Julie about it because it'll freak her out. So they're sitting there getting all the witchcraft handbooks and all that stuff to try and understand this. Stealing them from the library. Oh, what you what you do. Damn it, you're desperate. Well, you yeah. don't want a paper trail that like I checked this out. So. Very true. This yeah. is what we've learned from the Zodiac. <laughs> yeah. We watched steal the, the, books. Mm-hmm. the theatrical version of this, by the way. There is an extended version oh, available, yes. so we may have missed some connections because at some point, Dennis has a photograph of witches, and they have a symbol as part of their coven, and we later see that symbol drawn on the walls of... In the crawl space. So there's like this creepy crawl space closet in the girl's loft that has like a tiny, short, like three-foot door. It opens up to like a little narrow thing. It's something kids would think is awesome, but adults would be freaked out by it. definitely looks like a place where Toby's would live. Yeah. Yeah. Tell Toby I said it. That is is Toby's room, right? For all intents and purposes. He lives there. And he talks to to, uh, Christy, Mm -hmm. and uh, eventually makes his presence more and more known throughout the house like i mean it starts with you know the innocuous stuff as it always does and it ends up with you know uh shit being thrown around there's a sequence well, this movie works in the bloody mary thing of saying bloody mary in a yeah. mirror that was part of the trailer yep. if i remember for this one actually most of the trailer is not in this movie there's like 50 percent more footage that was not even used in this isn't movie. it both girls saying bloody mary yep in a it's mirror? both girls oh. there's a scene where like julie the mom gets like yanked up into the sky basically there's a if you watch the trailer like there are straight up characters in the trailer that are not even in this movie there's like they consult like a demonologist who comes and tries to do like a thing in their house and but that's in the first that's kind of in the first one so we don't need to retread that yeah it's interesting to me just you know when you're doing these uh, as a from the director's standpoint or filmmaker's standpoint as you're trying to make these because Part of the goal is to make it seem realistic and therefore relatable. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this didn't work on Sean. But the idea that I think like most of the audience bought into that this is real, the way that the illusion is created is that it almost seems like there aren't like written lines in a script. Somebody will have to correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, obviously there are mm-hmm. writers credited on this. One of them being Christopher Landon. Yeah. yeah. Who is the guy who gave us happy uh, death day and freaky. Yeah. yeah. So He's a Blumhouse regular. Stayed yeah. within the right. Blumhouse. Uh, <laughs> this is nice launching. Cush- nice cushy for- job. Right yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're the son of Michael Landon, it's easy to just get That's handed right. jobs in Hollywood, you know. But now he's like on the on the fast track because mm-hmm. I'm sure he's got something else uh, coming out. Do something better than happy death day to you. Yeah. Do better than that, yeah, sir. That was disappointing. That um, was very disappointing. Uh, happy Death Day, though. If you haven't seen it, oh, it's yeah. a good one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Watch that one. But um, that second one, not a horror movie. Yeah. yeah. Not a horror movie, guys. And un. Not a good movie. Yeah. Um, where were we going with this? Um, uh, oh, yeah. In order to convey the illusion, it seems like they give you know actors. Here's the information that we're trying to convey in this scene. This is these are the important plot points. Right. Hit these. But basically, just improvise this. You know. Right. Um, which so. I thought that Dennis, like for someone who doesn't have kids and kind of just started dating someone who has kids, did a pretty good job of like talking to kids and like mm-hmm. getting on their level. Well, you I know? imagine that like more so than the filming of these movies, it seems like uh, the preparation of, you know, selecting the right child actors, uh, getting all the actors together mm-hmm. and getting them comfortable with each other probably takes more time than the actual shooting of the right. movie. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it feels like a normal movie is like you do rehearsals, but I mean, like pages are written overnight and it's like, you're an actor, just go and deliver it. Here's your mark. These are like, we're going to spend a lot of time in the, on the front end, short time on the actual filming end and they just film everything. Right. And then later in an editing room, they have to determine what the movie is. Yeah. Basically, like, and I, I do think the kid actors in this movie are pretty good. Usually kid actors get yes. on my nerves. I feel like the two in this movie are pretty believable and pretty good. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, for, mm-hmm. you know, the, when they say action, that's your mom. You know, that kind of, right. you know. I have uh, I have two nieces about this age, so this movie's not going to help me look at them any like, <laughs> you know, I already eyeball them because they're they're 
kids and they're weird anyway. Do they have now. a weird crawl space closet, Sean, in mean, their room? They, should you open the door and look, make sure there's not symbols drawn on the wall in there? With one of them, that yeah. little one is, yeah. she's a wild child, so maybe her. I, I Did you guys find it weird, Colin, I guess this is more for you, that like this movie was so focused on Christy and Toby, considering like it seems like Katie is the more like right. affected one later on? Yeah, yeah because yeah. she becomes the centerpiece of the yeah. trilogy. What happens to Christy? Because I don't, I have not seen the second one. Well, in the end of the first one, Christy it's more about becomes, her son. Christy becomes, or sorry, yeah, oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Christy is like, uh, it like a wreck pulled into the darkness yeah. at the end of the movie because the I think one? the thing, yeah. and then Katie come, pa- Katie then possessed from the end of the first movie mm-hmm. comes in and abducts the infant because uh, it's all it's it's like. Like you're saying, it's like hereditary. Right. We're like, you need the yes, movie. right. Yeah. But like you're saying, like hereditary. It's like they need a son for whatever reason right. for this ritual. So yeah. like the second movie is actually not really about Chrissy. It's about their like infant son more mm-hmm. than anything. So do they get into like we need the son for a ritual? Is this all no. the haunting is happening around the son? Yeah, but that's all you really know. None of this none stuff of is explained, which is okay. why I none think of this the third the one, witch stuff. None of that's none in of the that's, second. Okay, one. that's this is the first movie where this is introduced. Right, it's retroactively explaining yeah. what you've seen in the other movies, okay. which I guess yeah. is why you're saying this is like the you only the, need the three of these the, and you pretty much yeah, got the whole story. Yeah, exactly. So the, what the movie sets up, I mean, obviously after uh, you know. Uh, Dennis hides all this stuff from from Julie, even though it's like you know you're actually seeing real paranormal activity on on camera when she experiences. I get it though because I wouldn't want to know. Just don't tell me. Just you know, like it's what can I do about it? Yeah. And what she, can I fucking do about she it? She continually we like rejects the idea just on its face, even though there's weird shit happening. And you know, it, mm-hmm. they first even all, have that scene where like he's trying to get her to watch the tape, and she's like, "No, there's no ghost." First of all, that's his fault because he does not know how to present information in the correct order or yeah, in the right, right way. Right, right, right. Like yeah, he, yeah. he is an idiot. Yep. As far as trying to explain but that's this to a, someone, that's, a, that's how the scene is constructed by yes. the filmmakers to make that happen. That she's not gonna, you know, yeah, watch but this it, until yeah. she sees it herself. And then it's like, okay, we're getting out of here and we're going to grandma's house, which it turns out is the worst place to go. Cause because she doesn't buy into it until she sees all the furniture fall right, down. Right. right. Yeah. It's hard to, to walk. Away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> her, her kitchen table split in half, like fell from the ceiling and split in half. Yeah. Like it's hard to ignore that. So it's like, all right, we're packing up the kids and we're going to grandma's house and grandma's very welcoming. And then the first night there in the middle of the night, uh, they awaken. Why are they recording in the grandma's house? Because, it, I mean, they don't know that it's not going to follow them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, they well, don't he, know what they're well, dealing with. They have with. one line where he says, like, I'm going to keep recording until this is over. Yeah. And that's, that explains yeah. it. And, and I, yeah. I, but great I, line. But I think, like, when he, what he's saying is that, like, if it's the house, we'll know tonight, right? Like, mm. if it's just the house, it's, if it's an Amityville situation, we'll know tonight because I'll record and we won't see anything in the morning, so we'll be good. But if it's not the house, then we'll we know. know. Then we you know. know what this is for it to be up. Well, they wake up in the middle of the night because they hear cars arriving. Uh, Julie goes to see what her mom's doing and never comes back to There's bed. There's a lot of loud ass banging. Yeah. Like cars driving up, loud fucking banging. Like they're not even hiding the fact what they're doing. Well, this is actually where the movie became less like the, you know, it's like this is kind of the departure where, like I said, you, the, the first half of the most of the movie, you get paranormal activity. And then this kind of the climax felt like something different and it actually seemed like it did kind of crank up the because then you're like i really don't know what's going on first of all it's a ghost or demon or whatever but now it's like what the fuck and it ends up with dennis taking the camera of course and going throughout the house only the house has now got uh you know all these hidden satanic symbols you know that obviously the paintings are dropping down and revealing these symbols the paintings that the girls were kind of like mesmerized by earlier yeah Yeah. and we're like oh grandma well sean was into this because i mean obviously when we watched it the first time i think you go through the same you know thing sure you're like uh grandma uh grandma (laughs) something not right with grandma Yeah, Yeah. yeah grandma so she is part of a coven, and there's a creepy scene where he goes into a dark garage and turns Ooh, on the camera, God. and there's all these old ladies like there in their again. Ropes. If and this they, happened to me, I'd scream and run. And they are nonplussed by his presence. No. Like they don't like turn and run away when he sh- when he like turns the light on them. They keep coming at him. You, yeah. Like and and like he goes through doors and peeks through the window, and they're still c- coming at him. And their relentlessness is what makes it so terrifying. It's not like they're banging. You know, no, they're just like slowly. 
kind of thing. They're just yeah. walking toward you. Yeah, like, they I are. Guess it following. Like, yeah, it follows. Uh, it kind of. Yeah. Um, and, and this kind of. Don't uh, have sex with me and take all my energy away. Like, <laughs> suck my energy out of me. I would not want that. And it, well, this is where you got to go with Paranormal Activity 7, because what else are you going to do with it? Okay, so um, they. But it ends up that uh, he does find. Okay, so he finds Christy. Who's been the one who's been the focus of all the paranormal yep. activity. Uh, but then it's Well, Katie. and and there's some sort of like obvious ritual prep going on because before they go to bed, the grandma's like dressing them up and is like, oh, aren't you a pretty bride? And then they're like, well, who are you getting married to? Toby. Yeah. And that's yep. when it's like, okay, this isn't like girl's imagination anymore. Like clearly there's something bigger and more sinister right, at work here. Yeah. Because there's also a line where, uh, because these are like the mythology lines, like, you know, you need to have a son is number yeah. one. Number two is out of the book where he says to um, Randy, it's like they would, you know, wait until the girls were a certain age. And then uh, like there's a marriage ritual with the uh, uh, the demon. Mm -hmm. And then we see. Uh, and them. then they're brainwashed, though, is what so they, they said. So they don't remember it, it which, was which setup explains for this, the, the next, the, 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 first yeah, the first two, two movies. movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not yep. gonna remember this. Like, yep. uh, okay, you're covering all your bases here. Yep. Right? <laughs> yeah. What? It, the, I mean, I'm sure there was a whiteboard somewhere. It's like every loose end. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We got it. I know, because yep. it could be ADR. You don't know, but it's like somewhere in a test screening. If they didn't get it, they're like, we got to put this in there. Right. So they are aware of that mm -hmm. mythology that you may not have the first uh, viewing uh, see. Um, but yeah, so it's like grandma is part of a, uh, cult. They have summoned Toby. They are trying to get a male heir somehow by wedding her to Toby, mm -hmm. which would explain, I guess that explains why like she can't be rid of him. Right. Like, like I, they must've wed Katie and Toby then though, okay, because, so, but if that's the case, okay. So here's where the, I mean, I know it gives you a creepy, like, Ooh, ending because uh, Dennis meets his demise. He's like folded in gets half. Gets his back the, bended uh, until mm -hmm. it snaps. Yeah. yeah by he, the invisible he gets Jason creature. Sixed. Yeah. Um, but it ends with uh, grandma going up the stairs with the two girls. Tra la 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 as they go to quote unquote, get ready. Mm -hmm. And then we go to black and then it's like, okay, so what did, what happened then? If she was married to the demon, that explains paranormal activity one and two. What's the long term that ends up with the, the, the baby from two? Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe you're married to this thing until you get the male heir, but I don't think two follows through on that. Okay, because I'm confused about that myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, maybe they... Mm, that's true. How are they writing this? Because if they're writing a bunch of this stuff to tie it up... You can't, you can tie it up, but you can't go back and put stuff in the second one. You know what I mean? Like right. take the right. stuff that the, the uh, mythology that they've created in this one, they can kind of make the other ones fit into it, but yeah, they can't add stuff to it to be like, oh yes, the sun and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm figuring this out as we go along. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then we got to watch Paranormal Activity 4, where Paranormal oh. Activity 4 involves- That's the neighbor, right? Yeah. But uh, that, t that takes place after Paranormal Activity 2, because is the kid in the second, uh, in the fourth one, the infant grown up? I have not seen the fourth uh, see, one. I, I stopped after that. Uh, this was it, the last one I watched, and I said I got the full story, so I'm good. They all kind of washed over me after this, because I think the marked ones was like, this is going to be like a Latino marketed movie, but yep. there was a tenuous connection, like mm -hmm. the family and that live next door to Katie or something like there was some kind of which you know, doesn't make sense because you've been telling us it's not the house it's them right so like why would it go to the neighbor you know right. like it doesn't yeah. make any sense because I, I imagine they were going to do like a whole bunch of different like tenuously cr connected paranormal activity movies. they came over and swam in the pool once now they're haunted <laughs> yeah yeah well I mean there was a haunted pool cleaner so true well, <laughs> it could, it could work works. yeah and I just I, made up a connection I saw <laughs> the ghost dimension but I do not remember what that was about you did more work all. than I did yeah. <laughs> does a camera go into the ghost dimension yeah because uh -huh. it's all in 3D and there uh -huh. is like a yeah that way, I just remember it being piss poor, and you're like, "Why?" And this series has overstayed its welcome. Yeah, <laughs> so the seventh one is definitely going to be like a TikTok challenge, right? It's going to be something. like, "Do this and see what happens," and then it's it's going to be like that. That's speaking of what which, it's going to be. Do you remember uh, we were talking about like oh, no. those? Because uh, was it a TikTok or YouTube? Was it like 
the Zebo challenge or something it had something to do with a Ouija board or something where you would summon this thing and it became like a little viral deal for a while. Huh. And then it turned out that it was promotion for a movie. Now I don't even remember what the Ouija? movie was. <laughs> no, it was some crappy like horror movie that like kind of came and went, but it was like this whole like Zobo or something. I can't remember what it was called. The challenge. It was like a YouTube thing. Zomo. Is this, anybody I need don't, you to figure this out real quick. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about that weird, like, bird-faced yeah, Momo? Yeah, Momo? No, Momo? Momo, Momo. Was it a Momo challenge? Momo. With the bird face thing? Yes, the yeah. bird face lady, which is yeah. fucking terrifying. I, I don't ever want to see that again. No, never. Didn't that end up being, like... A secret it's, stealth promotion for some no 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 it, no no that was an uh, art piece yeah. that someone took a like had a picture of and co-opted it and kind of made it into like it would pop up like as a jump scare in like youtube videos yeah. and then be like tell you to kill yourself and little it kids like a cre- it turned into a creepy pasta thing. yeah it yeah. turned into a creepy pasta thing and li- little kids were stumbling across it and that was the yeah, problem my son had showed me momo yeah, right? oh. yeah. and it, no it was just and, and i guess like the creator of the sculpture like destroyed it and like did a video destroying it so that kids would stop freaking out about it uh-huh. but like yeah it was like he just created this piece of art that got co-opted right. into which a kind of looks thing. is it truth or dare it's uh it kind of like looks smile harmless. face it, if you look at it yeah it's, it like it's harmless but then you're like Ugh, it's, it's still unsettling terrifying. yeah yes. can you look up really eyes. quick just like zozo challenge maybe I, it was I zozo don't... Just, uh, I'm curious. My, I don't want to see sorry, this fucking bird thing. On no, my it's not. It's not Momo. It was like, uh, just see if something comes up with Zozo. Sean, you do this. I'm not doing. I'll just say, oh, I am Zozo. I'm seeing Zozo. Okay, yes. Is it like somehow related? Does it say anything? Is there a connection to like a movie? Okay, so well, like I, that there's I don't remember it seemed like okay. Well, maybe I'm. This is a, there's that. Should have researched. I think it. you're uh, conflating <laughs> things. <laughs> Might be a horror short story. Zozo. I am. The, uh, there's something. Okay. There's some mythology to it because I'm seeing a lot of stuff pop up, but it has to do with a Ouija board. Okay, that's what I thought. I had, but then okay. I thought I also heard that it was connected to him. But this is like basically the thing that I guess that you try to do is as a as a as a distributor of a movie like this is you're trying to do like these kind of this is what Paranormal Activity gave us and Blair Witch was that kind of stealth marketing. Yes, where you're watching stuff that you think is real, a real challenge. It goes viral, and it turns out that was actually like mm-hmm. you know. Trying to get you to see a movie, <laughs> like, uh, you know. I remember District Nine having a really good stealth campaign like that too. Like, did you guys ever see the bus, the bus stop signs that had like the oh, the, yeah. the no aliens allowed, like on the oh, bus yeah. stop or those. like in public? I, yeah, I think it was in L.A. at the time, and they had them at all the bus. They stops. were in Chicago, yeah. yeah. And I remember like being like, "What the fuck is this?" And like, there was like a like a web address you could go to, right. and it was like, oh, yeah, but it was like good. they, yeah, the district, like, bring that back, bring back that guerrilla marketing. I kind of like it. The yeah. last one I remember. I think you had to be pretty heavily on Twitter, but Blair Witch when it when the new one came that out, that dreadful, dreadful movie, that very dreadful movie. But they had some kind of viral marketing going for it too mm-hmm. on Twitter. They would you follow the right people, like they were part of the uh, associated with the people who were actually in the movie, like mm-hmm. on camera. Those characters, they'd send you shit like. Uh, the stick figures and all that. Yeah. Oh, super! Do you remember, guys? Remember Super Eight's guerrilla marketing? No. Like they had that. I mean, it it didn't live up to the movie, but like they had uh, that trailer where it was just the train crashing, mm-hmm. and oh. in the train crash, there was like a close up on like the serial number of the train, and that was actually an right. IP address. Oh. And when you put that in, it took you to a website right. where it was like information about the alien, yeah. and then so that got you really excited, That's like, like your, me. And then you AR. saw the movie, and you were like. Yeah. Oh, that's it. The augmented okay. reality yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, campaigns. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, do it well. <laughs> well, um, okay. Well, but we digress. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're going to tell you what we thought about Paranormal Activity 3 and whether or not you should watch it. But uh, first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Do you think he's ever been possessed? Do you think he knows Toby? (laughs) Oh, I mean, he's definitely. Can you imagine Igor's imaginary friend? How terrifying is that? Oh, God. I don't want to know. In order for you to join this interactive portion of our show, all you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. 
or you can follow along on Instagram for the time of your life. It's Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Paranormal Activity 3. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, Now, here's a horror movie franchise that for some reason my wife is actually the bigger fan of versus myself. For some reason, I couldn't get into this series of movies, but I did see this one once, and I've always thought that it was strange that this franchise stuck with found footage the whole time, but Blair Witch abandoned it the moment it got a sequel, then tried to get it back for the third and never recovered. That's the true. Third? That is weird. There were, wait, oh, yeah. the third. The third is oh, oh, the one Lynch. we were just talking right, about. I'm yeah, just like the third. Oh, because we all try con- to forget it exists. Continuity. Did we do part two on this show? No. Okay. Book hey, of Shadows. Oh, Book no. of Shadows. Hey, remember when people thought Adam Wingard could make good things? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That yeah. didn't last long. Well, he got. Sorry. Didn't he just do Kong Godzilla versus Kong? Yeah. Remember when we just said. Good things. Yeah, I, yeah okay. I didn't say mediocre things. I said good things. All right. Uh, there was, uh, uh, for Blair Witch, there was, I don't know if you guys remember this, there was like a three video game set that came out uh, sometime after, the, I think it was a tie-in with Blair Witch 2, but those actually were pretty decent. One of them was yeah. like the Rustin Parr. Yeah. One yeah, of them yeah. was, you know, yeah. Um, Adam Kaler says, I just finished watching Paranormal Activity 3. It felt like I was watching a Where's Waldo movie if Waldo (laughs) were invisible, adding witches, I assume they're witches, to the mythology seemed like an afterthought. Probably best to stick to the original or a better slow burn horror movie might be Ty West's The House of the Devil. Okay. I hear a lot about The House of the Devil. Yeah, I was going to say Ty West is a big blind spot in general for me. Me too. Yeah. I always hear his name. Maybe we need to work on that. Maybe. Ty West movies? Yeah. yeah. He's got some good ones. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah. all right, that's an area to explore. Uh, about last week's episode, Guns Akimbo, Johnny New Jersey writes in and says, while I've heard, while I have heard and saw the trailer for this movie, I completely forgot about it. So thank you, Holly, for finally making me sit down and watch it. Mm. It's like a poor man's John Wick fell into the world of Deadpool <laughs> combined with Dread, and it was a fun time. Plus, any movie that with Van, Van Damme's sweet mullet from Hard Target and the ending theme song to Kickboxer <laughs> gets extra points from me. Eight out of ten jumping, spinning, roundhouse kicks. That is a Damn. great description of that movie. I wrote in my, I looked back on my notes when I, we were watching that movie, and I, I mean, I wrote this during the first 15 minutes, but I wrote, Scott Pilgrim, if he drank Monster instead of Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like Johnny New Jersey's description about it. It is very Deadpool in its humor. Yeah. Yes. Well, Evil Kid Summer says, uh, Samara Weaving's eyes are so psycho, I love it. Yeah, especially you mean when Margot she, Robbie's. Especially when she died. We're, uh, this discussion can continued on after <laughs> that episode. Like we said, we need the buzz, Buzzfeed quiz. Is like, is this or is this not Margot Robbie? I, I'll fail it. I know I'll I ace will. it. Like I got it. Like, Who's I the think, other? Yeah, there's like two other Australian actors. Okay, the one, who whoever the McKenna, whatever Ashley McKenna or whatever her name. No, was, yeah, she was, doesn't get her out of there. I well, I thought she looked the most like um, Margot Robbie. In there that. was one of those in that four that was a reach. It was. It's just like, eh, we can yeah. take her out. But the other ones are still like, okay. Well, about uh, the previous week's episode, we watched uh, Eight Legged Freaks. Mike Welch writes in and says, the co- "Oh, this is so." I was saying during that movie, there was a comedian in it uh, that none says, of us knew. Yeah, that none of you knew. <laughs> he says the comedian you're thinking of is Rick Overton. I remember seeing stand up on his comedic comic relief, and he's also in Groundhog Day. I mean, I think he's been in a lot of things, right. uh, but I remember him as a comedian, and I we identified him on our social media. Uh, Brett Williams says, "Why was Kari Werther's most famous?" job as the game show girl on mtv's remote control not mentioned in her filmography oh i do feel like we kind of failed for not mentioning that i mean that's true we don't always get to the mtv bits of people's careers. i feel like we do more often than I we mean, don't sometimes. though well we said filmography <laughs> yeah that's not really okay uh kryptonian orphan says please review more movies with kari were uh even when they're awful movies at least she's in them <laughs> okay. okay sure we'll put her on the wall and uh, Peter Gett says, uh, Colin, was the film you were thinking of The Tripper? And it turns out, yes, it was. Okay, nice. so in that movie. What were you trying to figure I out? said there was a movie about a killer Ronald Reagan, and I thought ah. that David Arquette was in it, but it turns out I was misremembering it. David Arquette directed a movie about wow. a killer Ronald Reagan killing a bunch of hippies, and like Thomas Jane, Paul Rubens. There's a bunch of folks okay. in it. Uh, the more you talk, Jason the more I'm Mews. like, I probably okay. should watch this yeah. at some point. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, right. Well, thank you, each of you, for writing in. We really appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you. 
And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, starting with me. I got to go first. Get this out of the way. Um, th- watching this movie 10 years on uh, has no benefit for the movie or for myself. Like because of everything that I've experienced, a first time watch for this 10 years on. I, I, it doesn't work. I've seen too many other things. I keep bringing up Hereditary because apparently it stole everything it owes to this movie. Um, but it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. I mean, when the when the movie ended and went to black, I almost shouted like, that's it. Because it felt like nothing really happened in this movie. This is just for me. You're very hard on found footage I'm movies. I don't. But it's. But again, I'm, I'm not. You saying, had a lot of the same complaints at the last exorcism. Uh, I think. Uh, did I? I yeah, you, and you to did that not like that movie. You no, were the only one who didn't it's, recommend it. It's just one of the genres that I can't get into, no matter what. Um, but I, th- but I also think like it's not the best genre. Like I know I have some problems with it, but I also think like they don't make the greatest movies. There are some really great ones, I will say that. But I'm also not gonna go uh, diving into that to explore these things because I. My brain seems to have a real hard time with them. This one is no exception, so uh, I will pass on this one. I don't. I just want to forget about this mythology. Well, now not, I now if I want to twist the knife on you at all, Sean, and get back for nothing but trouble and Howard the Duck, I'll just bring more fun footage. There you movies. go. Because well, I'm gonna be very silent during those episodes. But I mean, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, I'm gonna pass on this again. Like I said, I don't want to. I was curious as you guys were talking about the other movies in this, especially like these first three, if I was going to explore. But I, like I said, I just want to forget this and not be curious about it and not have to go explore them because I don't. It's going to be diminishing returns for me. I don't like them. Uh, they, I don't. I can't get into any level of believability with them. Um, maybe the day I see a ghost, like I'll, I'll go back and revisit all of these and be like, scary shit ever. But the, I, woo, this movie, it felt. Uh, it felt long. It felt like nothing happened. I do not like the main character. I think he's not given, uh, like I said, I think he's given a merciless job because he's got to keep, he's got to be the thrust for keeping the cameras going. And that's not, um, uh, I don't think it's a likable task for anybody in these movies. Um, but especially not for this guy. It doesn't feel like it's in 1988. That guy doesn't feel like he's in 1988. I have so many problems with this, but I think, I mean, it may just all be me. So, uh, we'll chalk it up to being me and I'm going to pass on paranormal activity three. Colin, what do you think? Well, I mean, tonight I had kind of the same reaction that I had the first time I watched it. So um, I thought Paranormal Activity as a series kind of got better as they went. Um, but this was, you know, I watched them in sequence and I was massively underwhelmed by that first one. Uh, you know, I was like, I don't see what the fuss is. This is just some guy setting up a camera and we're watching nothing happening. And then every once in a while there was a <laughs> on the soundtrack and then boo, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, I can appreciate it for a, that it was a $15,000, you know, uh, investment that returned a kajillion dollars. I appreciate it that it spawned a galaxy of found footage movies. It seemed like that was all we were getting for at least like 15 years or something like that. Um, I did like, I always, uh, in my mind, I always chalk this one up as this was the one I liked the most. I think that was because uh, obviously I had seen everything before that. And maybe now watching it, it's like, because it explains what has previously happened. So there might be buy-in. You know, if you come into the third one, then it might be like, well, I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's like a payoff to two mm-hmm. other movies that you've watched. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was effective. I, you have to kind of, at least I, my experience watching it was you got to kind of you know, let go of the the idiosyncratic things. It's like, no, it's not, not 1988. It's just basically that's how old the girls have to be in that. Yeah. You know. So, but Again, I know all, the, all this shit. Yeah. But- and I guess I, I see what you're saying, because uh, I have that, Sean, I, I have that same problem with a lot of found footage movies. It's like, I'm aware of the artifice uh, that they're trying to make it believable. They're not really movies, per se, uh, as they are just, um, it's like a spooky reality television. Like, mm. somebody figured out that, uh, you know, I mean, my, my whole, at the time that it came out, I kept remembering, like, man, this is like the horror version of Cops. You know, because cops, I think, was my uh, like way of seeing 
it was like this is going to be like reality tv after um, because all that stuff like the osbournes and all that stuff where we'd actually set up cameras and people would you know kind of play out their lives came after that you know and uh then i remember the x-files did an episode of cops it was like hilarious oh yeah so i was like but but that was because of the found footage stuff so (laughs) x-files thought what and they're like we're gonna make like the horror version of cops um but it was the idea that you have i think in watching and taking something that you were so familiar with with quote unquote reality tv and then saying now but now we're faking it we're confusing you the viewer into thinking what you're seeing is real that's the appeal of the found footage movie and somehow like playing a you know uh i always equate it also to the experience of uh playing a survival horror video game because it feels more uh direct the threat to you i think you know it's supposed so it's more scary in Mm -hmm. some ways that's what they're trying to do. That's why I found footage, I think, caught fire uh, because it was like with these movies, A, for on the Hollywood business end, they're a cheap investment. And on the consumer end, it feels like you're watching something, you they're know, coming to get you. Yeah. And it feels very scary that way because it's like, ooh, this is like real life. You know, I've been trained through these other shows and I'm using cops as an example, well, but there's no, tons but of it, stuff, you know, right. but it is a brilliant move, especially when reality TV is like you said, everywhere to like, take those like, yeah. well, we're watching that and that's real. And to yeah. apply it to big screen. Movies, I have yes. equated that type of video quality yes. to reality. And yes. now I'm telling you something that's fake and I'm confusing your brain. Yes. Into, well, and so it feels more sorry, Colin, but most reality television is very scripted and fake as well. Son well. of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, of the th- of the three paranormal activity movies, I like this one the best. So I guess I would recommend it. But I mean, you know, the interesting thing now tonight is listening to Sean as a first timer watching it and going like, well, it doesn't make any sense unless you've seen the other three. So yes. if you've seen the three of them, I think this one's the best one. I would give it a a recommendation. Then I think it's the best paranormal activity movie. Michaela, what do you think? Uh, I I think the thing I like the most about the paranormal activity franchise is that it violates all your safe spaces. Right. So like not only is like your home being invaded, which like whether it's paranormal or not, your home being invaded is always terrifying, but like you always feel safe in your bed and you always feel like if you pull your covers up over your head, everything's you'll be fine. You're protected. And I like still do that. This, I'm still always just this covers, movie, like your bed is not safe. Like uh, you see in the first, like, and not only that it plays on the trope of like you sticking your foot out from under the covers is not safe. That is a theme through all these movies. You stick your foot out, Toby, whatever demon he's grabbing that foot. Like it's, it happens in all these movies. And like, how do you escape that? And how do you escape it when it's you and not the house, you know? And I love that. Um, these are paranormal movies that don't bring religion into it a ton. The solution is not a priest coming to the house and, and doing whatever this, they don't know what the solution is. And I feel like that's the most realistic approach to this kind of situation. Um, cause if you're asking me to buy into a religious solution to this problem, I'm going to check out immediately. Like I'm out, I'm out of this movie. Once at the moment you're like, the solution is a priest to come in, you know, the irony um, is the solution probably would have been a priest. To come in. Well, that happens. <laughs> that happens in the first it's one, the first Colin. One they did bring and in, he was they? like, I can't fucking help you. I was he, gonna say, didn't he get scared, he gets and, run? scared <laughs> and runs out. So like, I like that they play on that trope of like, you think the problem's going to be solved in the first one. And then the priest is even like, I can't handle this and leaves. Um, I I saw this movie in theaters and it was probably one of the greatest theater experiences I've ever had. It was the most packed theater I've ever been in. Uh, I sat had to sit in the second row because there was no seats left because it was a full theater. And um, because it's PG-13, there was, a, I mean, I was 21 when this came out. So there was a lot of teenagers there. And in that third act, when like the witch stuff is dialing up and he's walking down that hallway and they're popping out of the darkness, people were running, screaming out of the theater. I saw people get up and run out of the theater screaming. Like I've never seen such a visceral, visceral reaction to horror movies as I have paranormal activity three. And you know, even like the, the sheet ghost dropping people just get, you could hear the whole theater gasp when that happened, like even the little things and like watching it with a crowd like that is really interesting too, because there's always someone 
that spot something in the frame before everybody else you know you hear one person and go, like, <gasps> and then yeah. it just like hits like a wave across the whole theater right um so that was a moment in time that i don't know if i'll ever experience again uh i i mean i go to the movies now and no one's there so like okay. i don't know that i'll ever see a horror movie and see people react that way and as someone who was in high school during like the torture porn era like I liked this being available to me. You know, I liked like as a reprieve. I, yeah, from all well, that. torture porn isn't scary. It's gross. There's a difference between gore and scare, you know, like terror, like that's just gross and it's just upsetting and unsettling. It's not scary, you know? And so this being like, the furthest you could go on the spectrum from torture porn, right? Because there is like no blood in these movies. There's, there's nothing. It's, it's literally invisible what you see attacking these people. Like I thought that was such a great reaction to torture porn. And I liked that these movies came along and disrupted that. Cause who knows how long those torture porn would have gone on if this hadn't come along. So I really like this franchise. I like the first three. I won't watch anything past that. I don't care what you tell me. I'm not watching the rest of them. I got the story I needed in these three. And I I love suspenseful movies, and I think these movies are a great exercise in suspense. And just like they have those moments of like, fuck, what would I do in that situation? What would I do if there was cloved hoof prints on the floor in my bedroom right next to where I sleep? You know, and I think that you know there are better found footage movies. Blair Witch is obviously like I said, it's a Citizen Kane. At Poughkeepsie Tapes is up there. Um, but this, these are just as good, and it's kind of sad to me that they've kind of been, like, lost to the sands of time. Maybe, like, Gen Z will rediscover them now with Seven coming out, and they'll be beloved again. But I think that just allow yourself to buy into the premise. You have no problem buying into any other fucking ridiculous premise of the movie. Everyone everyone likes Guns Akimbo, and that's a fucking ridiculous premise of a movie. But as soon as you put found footage on something, everyone's got a problem with it. So just allow yourself to fall into the world of the movie and just go with it. And if it's still not your thing... Fine, but just give it a chance. So I would definitely recommend it. I will say there is, you do get great theater experiences out of these movies. Absolutely. That's the fun part mm -hmm. about these, which I suppose maybe that's all they need to be. Mm -hmm. There you go. Because I think, like you said, we're overthinking it. Oh, from yeah, the definitely. Technical, oh, and definitely. Most people aren't seeing that. They're just seeing what, you know, it's, and it's yep. extremely relatable. Okay. All right. So next week, uh, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. Colin, what are we going to do next week? Well, we're saying that there was torture porn that was going on oh, no. at this point in time, and there was also the paranormal activity movies, but there was also some other genre that I think was like hugely influential. Final Destination? No. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh. Influential. Haven't we done one of that? We did. We did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I was wondering if you were going to dip back right. into it. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, well, apparently the forgotten uh, hugely influential genre of J-horror. J oh, yeah. That's right? true. Yeah. So tune in next week as we're going to talk all about probably J-horror, but we're going to go back to the one that kicked it all off, and that is Ringu. Ooh. All right. Known to you, but Ring is the real fucking name of the goddamn movie. Okay. I'll fight for that until I die. Uh, so we're watching Ring you next right, week yeah. on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>